online learning is not the next big thing. It's the big thing now, yeah? E-learning is a changing, and we will see new models, uh, new technologies, and the design emerge. So let's drop E, and at least give it a new and a wider definition. Uh, to open the seminar, uh, the floor is given to the dean of our uh, faculty, the dean of our uh, history and the philology faculty, uh, candidate of pedagogical sciences, docent Pilekla Nazira Dushebayevna. Please, Nazira Dushebayevna, vam slova. Sizge söz verdin. Rahmat, Janna Toktama Matavna. Good afternoon, Patiyasadzeh Algeer. Welcome to Salamat Star ve Urmatu Vizdin online seminar katılımcıları. Urmatu South Patshal Üniversitesi Profesör Reyma Erjerov Ejeke Vizdin seminarla da Vizdin Üniversitesi Tar Filologiya Fakültesine hoş geldiniz. Rahmat. Sizge hoş bulduk. Vizdin çakırını kavul alıp Vizdin okulcularımızga, cana studentlerimizge Oşul seminar, usul butçaktan seminar kaçırıp bayanıma nüzmenin kaçırıp duramazsa, şu fakültenin adına terim rastçılık bildiremin. Mien oylaptıram. Bugün ki seminar abdan bizge bağlı olu septelet, fakültenin tarihinde galatırgan gün bolu septelet. Antkeni okulcularımızga, studentlerimizge kandaydı bir dengelde bugün ki seminardan bir Yaxşı natıcasını verir deyken oydumun. İngiliz kalayımın. Sizge bekem deyin soğulu. Bizmen kısmat taşlarımızı mundan arızağı sözümüzü biz kuran kitayız sizden. Hürmatlı Reymayım alemi katışı uçularga dağı İngiliz kalayımın. Uşul seminarda uyuşturgan bizden Angris Filologiya Kafedrası'nın başısı Cannat Toktama Matıvına baştağın kollektifke cemaat tarasçılık bildiremin. Oşunda ile bizden koşma seminer bulvatat, bizden Angris Filologiya Kafedrası'nın ulu oğutucusu Abakulu Fravşan Ağaydağı özünün cakşı bir metodik alıqcaktan bir bayandaması menen katışat. Anda mesem men sözümüzü kıskartıp, iyilik kalayımın. Cannat Ejeke, Reyma Ayımğa men sözümü yetkizip koysağımız, sizden sıra natalem. Rahmat, iyilik bolsun. Peki. Uh, dear Professor Reyma Aljab, thanks for your agreeing to participate in our seminar uh, organized by the uh, Department, Department of English Philology. You are welcome to our faculty, Faculty of History and the Philology of Kurtuzbek University. And we are uh, always interested in scientific and the methodological contacts with you. I wish you creative success. Okay, uh, uh, Nazira Dishubayevna always provides uh, all round support to uh, teaching staff. Uh, she, we wish to continue to support scientific and the theoretical, uh, theoretical, educational, and the methodological success of the faculty. And they let me declare online workshop open and they introduce uh, the speakers of our methodological workshop. Uh, that focuses on engaging academic educators from English-speaking countries to the community, promoting the use of uh, mobile apps uh, for teaching English and the collecting online feedback strategies. Our guest... Uh, our uh, guest of honor is a professor of King South University, Dr. Reima Aljar. Uh, Professor Reyma Aljab has taught uh, ESL and the ESP linguistics and the translation for 26 years. She has uh, 700 publications and the conference presentations in 70 countries. Some of her articles are published in ITI and sports journals. She won three excellence in teaching awards and is the best faculty website award at her university. Uh, uh, uh, it should be noted that the uh, workshop consists of two parts. In the first part, uh, Professor Reyma Aljar uh, shares her experience. And in the second part, we will turn to the master class of our senior teacher, Abakul Prashan Ahmadovic. Uh, dear Professor Reyma Aljar, uh, you have the floor. 
Okay, thank you very much. Okay, how can I? Now, okay, I want to share my screen. Okay, thank you very much. Now, how can I put that on top? Uh, okay, as you know, many students uh, nowadays spend a lot of time interacting with their mobile phones. Even small children, they own a mobile phone. They use their mobile phone for communication, entertainment, and learning. Uh, in a study by Thornton and Hauser, uh, the researchers found that young Japanese students prefer to use their mobile phone for almost everything, for emailing, reading books, and other things, entertainment and other things. Uh, Google Play and the iPhone app stores, they have a multitude of applications that can be downloaded and used for teaching and learning English, any, any language, uh, including English, of course. Uh, so um, there are lots of applications for teaching and learning English in general and for teaching and learning specific language skills such as reading, listening, speaking for all ages, for children, for adults, and also for all proficiency levels, for beginners, for intermediate, for advanced levels, and also for a variety of purposes, general purposes or specific purposes. Now, why um, should or can students use apps? Um, teachers can use, uh, students and teachers, why should they use apps? Because uh, they can use apps to supplement in-class instruction. They can use apps as extension activities for remedial purposes and also uh, as enriching activities. Uh, apps are free, they are easy and quick to download and update and also delete. If you don't like them, you can delete them in one second. Uh, you can get numerous apps that target a specific skill or a grammatical structure that the students need to develop. College students can use apps anywhere, anytime, as, and as many times as they need. They don't need to be in the classroom. They can be in the taxi, they can be at the gym, on the bus, in the street, anywhere. Uh, they can get the app, the icon, and a description of the app and also the user rating uh, in stars. Um, so by looking at the stars, you can tell whether uh, the app is excellent, it's very good, it's poor, and so on. Uh, students can use the apps to assess their own general proficiency level in English or in a specific skill such as vocabulary and grammar. Um, apps have different difficulty levels and also instructional approaches. They, don't, they use different uh, teaching strategy or instructional approach and also the content details vary, uh, varies from uh, app to app. Uh, apps can be de deleted if you don't like them and they can be used to review and prepare for standardized tests such as the IELTS, the TOEFL, or the GRE. Now, how can we search for apps? Uh, we have two ways. You can either use your mobile phone directly, go to Google Play on the mobile, or if you have, I have a Samsung, if you have an iPhone, you go to the App Store or on the laptop, you can go to Google Play or go to the App Store 
and in the search box you can enter anything you want to get an app for if you want to get grammar apps you just enter English grammar or English idioms or reading comprehension it's important to specify the language because otherwise you will get grammar apps in Arabic in Chinese in Japanese in Russian in French uh, so you can uh, um, enter either the general skill for example English speaking English listening English reading English writing or a specific skill such as uh, for example English idioms reading comprehension English pronunciation TOEFL test preparation TOEFL vocabulary English simplified novels or any other topic now when you uh, search for any for um, apps related to any skill or sub skill you will get too many so if we have for example 50 apps for reading comprehension now which ones can we use what are the criteria for selecting apps when we select apps the app should be related to the skill under study the skill we are interested in we want to develop also it should focus on a single skill or aspect um, it's not feasible and I don't recommend that you find for example one app for all English skills just one skill either speaking reading writing uh, vocabulary uh, grammar even in grammar it's better to focus on just one single grammatical structure uh, you have to check the app and make sure it contains enough material and exercises if it's very short then it will not be very beneficial uh, you need to download several apps that target a particular skill to accommodate different proficiency levels and different learning styles, different needs, and different purposes. Because, you know, uh, when you have students in the classroom, they are not the same level. They don't have the same needs. They don't have the same learning styles or proficiency levels or purposes. So. It's better to download several apps, but uh, before you assign the apps, uh, you need to try them. Because just by looking, you wouldn't know whether this app is appropriate or not. You have to try them, um, download them, and then check each um, app and make sure it is uh, appropriate for the students. Uh, the students also can locate and select apps that they like uh, sometimes they su suggest uh, some apps related to a particular skill now when we teach English we teach listening speaking reading grammar uh, tenses uh, we teach vocabulary um, TOEFL um, anything there are three instructional phases one phase, pre-task phase, before the students start to use the app. And also task phase, while the students are using the app. And then post-task phase, after the students use the app. Now, before the students start using the app, we need to tell the students to state the objective. Tell the students why um, you recommend that they use a particular app what they are going to do what uh, the students are going to study or practice which app they need to locate or use if you give them several uh, they have to uh, select one or two what is expected of the students you need to explain uh, what they need to do with the app, how they are going to use it. Give them clear instructions, specific 
instructions, detailed instructions. Don't assume that if you just give them the name of the app, the app, all the students will be able to use it. Some will, but many students will not be able to use it properly. They need help. They need guidance. Also, explain to the students how a particular task should be performed. Uh, you need to introduce the app or the apps to be used. Um, if you want them to find the apps on their own, you need to show the students how to search Google Play or the App Store for apps targeting a specific skill uh, and how to use specific search terms. This is a problem for students. They do not know which search terms they need to use, not only in English, in any topic. Uh, sometimes when you enter a search term in Google, Google will give you options at the end of the page. So they can browse through those options and click on one or two of these, and then they will be taken to another page with many uh, links. Uh, also, uh, show the students uh, what they are supposed to do, how they are supposed to use the app, and where to respond if there are exercises. Uh, I recommend that you use an online course or an online discussion forum or a blog because you need to post questions and the uh, students, they need to post answers, comments, and um, you need to use the online course or the discussion forum or blog for discussion. Um, the discussions and the comments will be on the app that the students have used and the content of the app. Now, while using the app, uh, how can the students use the app and where? The students can work on the app at home, in the classroom, in the garden, in the cafeteria. They can use the app individually. They can work on the app in pairs too. The students can work together or they can work in small groups, three of three or four or even five. You need to set a time limit or a deadline for completing an app. Don't leave the students to work on their own. If you leave them, then they will never finish. They'll take forever. But if you tell them you need to finish this app by this date, give them one week, give them 10 days like this, two weeks, depending on the content of the app, how big it is, how detailed it is. Uh, also, while they are using the app, sometimes they run into problems and difficulties, though you need to guide the students and help them with the difficulties that they are having while working on the apps. If they have questions, try to answer the students' questions. Now, after they finish, um, give them feedback because they will come and tell you, okay, I did this, I did that. Or uh, if you ask them questions, then tell them which qu uh, answers are correct, which ones are not correct, what they need to fix. Um, also, make comments on the student's performance. Uh, when I teach Saudi students, Saudi students won't do anything if you don't give them marks. You give them credit, they kill themselves. You don't give them marks, they just ignore uh, the assignment or, or anything you give them. So give the students extra credit to encourage them to work. Uh, also, encourage the students to correct each other and comment on each other's performance because they will be answering questions and posting comments and, uh, of course, uh, discussing the content of 
uh, the app in the online course or online discussion forum. Uh, also, each student should keep a log of the apps she or he has used. You know, some students are fast. They can finish many apps and some are slow or less proficient. So they will complete only few. So it's better if each student uh, makes like um, keeps a log of the names of the apps that they have finished so that when you give them extra credit uh, the marks that you give should correlate with how many apps the students have finished now the instructor's role now the instructor's role when you teach online or when you uh, you when the students use mobile apps is not like the teacher's role in the classroom now, when you teach in the classroom, instruction is instructor-centered. The teacher is the one who reads, who explains, who gives examples and uh, everything. And the students, they just listen and watch. When you teach with mobile apps, you are a facilitator. You help the students find the apps, download the relevant um, English language apps that meet their needs and purposes, and try to match um, the app difficulty level with the student's proficiency level. And you need to follow up the students to make sure they are using the apps and they are making the best use of the apps. You can encourage the students to locate their own apps and also select the apps that they like and that they are related to the skill or topic um, they need to uh, learn or develop. Okay. For effective teaching, whether you teach Online, you teach in the classroom, you teach English, you teach economics, you teach medicine, and whatever you teach, the students should know the goal. Why they are learning this? What are you, they going to, you, to do with the information, the material, the skill they are learning? So, the students should know the goal. And... They should receive help and guidance, support, encouragement, and feedback from the teacher. Also, throughout the semester, they need, you need to evaluate their progress. Some students are poor at the beginning of the semester, but they improve gradually along the way. So, if you only give them a test at the end of the semester, you will not know the student's progress. So, it's better to uh, evaluate the student's progress um, throughout the semester. When students use technology, whether they use mobile apps or any other technology, they use Zoom, they use Blackboard, they use an online discussion forum, they should not be left on their own and should never use the technology passively, whether it's a mobile app or a YouTube video um, lecture, they should not use it passively. Uh, just look at the app, browse through the app, and that's it. They should have a task to do. They should look for something while uh, um, using the app, uh, uh, like answering a question or working on a task. Also, students should have their input. Uh, they can suggest apps of their choice related to a particular task or skill under study. 
you will find that some students do not possess a smartphone or um, those who use um, iPhone, I used to run into this problem. If you tell them, okay, uh, download this ebook, they would come to my office and tell me, oh, we don't have it in the app store. So you have to have like another option for them, uh, another version so that they can use on their laptop if they cannot use it on their mobile. I also recommend that you include some of the material, a grammatical structure, vocabulary, uh, reading comprehension skill on the test in order for the students to take the mobile apps seriously. Like my students, they only study for tests. They only pay attention and care about Things that will come on the test. If they don't come on the test, they will just forget all about them. Now I'm going to show you some examples of apps according to the different kinds of skills. Now these are listening and speaking apps. All of them are, of course, when you search Google Play, you will find a lot more. I only selected a few that would fit uh, the slide. So English listening and speaking, English listening, improve your, improve English speaking, uh, hello and speak English, talk. Uh, these are reading apps, English reading, listening, speaking, reading, writing, all, all of the skills are here. Uh, English reading, English stories, uh, cat reading, reading comprehension, reading comprehension. These are comprehension skills. Kids English word, English word reading. This is for children. So um, we don't assign it to college students. English reading comprehension and so on. Speed reading and phonics, you know, reading is a very broad skill and within reading there are specific skills. For example, speed reading, how to read fast, and phonics. Phonics means decoding. Uh, for example, you know English is not phonetic. We spell the words one way, we pronounce them one way. So phonics would try to give them like a rule, for example, if we have double E in a word. How, is it, uh, how are they pronounced, or E-A, or O-I, or, or if there is a silent E uh, at the end. Okay, so here, speed reading, speed reading, speed reading, English pronunciation, phonics, basic English phonics, English phonics, and English spelling. Uh, these are literature apps, English literature, all of them. History of English, English novel book, English literature. If you want novels, you'll find apps for novels. If you want um, classical literature or you want um, uh, fiction, poetry, you'll find apps for everything you can think of. Um, these are writing apps. Of course, there are also different kinds of Writing apps, academic writing, improve, improve English, English writing, English listen and write, how to improve writing. Uh, you can find also apps about um, essay writing or paragraph writing. They are available. 1,000 plus English writing skills, English writing skills, 360 Mail templates. This is only for letter writing. Vocabulary apps. English 30,000 words with pictures. English vocabulary, vocabulary 6,000 plus. Vocabulary trainer 10,000 words, 3,000. These are for kids. IELTS vocabulary. There, there is also TOEFL vocabulary or GRE vocabulary. 
prefixes and suffixes. There are apps specifically for prefixes and suffixes. And here, English confused words like alter and alter with an A at the end, with an E at the end. The difference between them. Accept, except. Word roots, uh, prefixes, suffixes, Greek and Latin roots, grammar apps. You can find apps for all grammatical structures in the English language. Okay, like these, or a specific grammatical structure. For example, there are apps for idioms, apps for tenses. So, 10,000 English idioms, idiom land, idiom quiz, English idioms and phrases, learn English tenses, English tense book, uh, English tenses, tenses, tenses, okay? Because tenses are difficult for students. There are also many, many, many dictionary apps, monolingual, bilingual, you just name it, all kinds, Oxford, Cambridge, Merriam-Webster, offline, yeah, some of these you can download on the mobile phone and you can use them online, uh, offline without internet connection, even the apps, some can be used with internet connection and some can be used offline with no internet connection. Now there are testing apps, 50,000 test questions, test your English. So these are general tests, not standardized, like the IES, the TOEFL, British Council, English score, English test, quiz. You can also uh, find apps for vocabulary test, grammar test, like this, for a specific skill. Um, uh, there are apps also for standardized tests, such as the IELTS, the TOEFL, the GRE, the TOEIC, the GMAT, okay? Either the test in general or a specific skill. For example, this one, GRE prep. But for vocabulary, GRE verbal, IELTS listening, complete skills for IELTS, vocabulary for IELTS, like this. So if you are looking for uh, a specific um, standardized test skill, uh, you can enter TOEFL vocabulary, TOEFL preparation, TOEFL uh, grammar, TOEFL this, TOEFL that or IELTS listening, IELTS reading, IELTS vocabulary, GRE verbal, GRE vocabulary, like this. But if you want an app for everything, so you just enter uh, IELTS, the IELTS test, IELTS test, or TOEFL apps, or GRE apps. Okay, there are also daily English lessons or daily practice, uh, daily English practice and podcasts. Podcasts here, what you have, it's like a recording that you listen to. So uh, this is for uh, developing students' listening skills. Almost all TV stations, CNN, Al Jazeera, BBC, they have podcasts. So podcast, it can be with pictures or without pictures. Uh, okay, so daily learn English, daily English listening, daily English pra practice, daily learn English. So this, this is different from this. They are not the same. The title is the same, but they are not. Podcast, USA podcast, English podcast, Luke's English podcast. Slow American English, podcast uh, tracker, and podcast app. Okay. Uh, now, this one is for uh, English for specific purposes. If the students are looking for medical terminology, there are plenty of apps for medical terminology, even for medical prefixes, suffixes, and roots. 
So this one is disease dictionary, offline medi medical dictionary, medical terminology, dictionary, medical terminology, terminology, medical terms, disorders and diseases, and medical dictionary, and so on. Okay, as teachers, if you would like to learn new tricks, new strategies for teaching English, there are also there are also apps for okay, I'm about to finish. This is the last one. Our time is running out. Please rejoin again. Okay. You want me to log in again? Yeah. You will rejoin with the same link again. Our time is running out. Okay, okay. This is okay. Has ended, okay. Okay, I'll share the screen again. Okay, so uh, this is uh, the last uh, slide. So as a teacher, uh, if you want to learn more about how to teach um, English or different skills to the students, uh, there are also apps for teachers that show them how to teach. Uh, this one is teacher's app, uh, teach online, virtual blackboard, virtual classroom, classroom management, teaching strategies, TEFL handbook, uh, English language, uh, methods of teaching. So you can find different ones, micro teaching, virtual blackboard, and so on. You just enter uh, teaching English apps. Okay, so with this, I come to the end of my session. Uh, if you have any questions, and now the floor is yours. Mm -hmm. If you have questions or comments. Okay, thank you, Dr. Uh, Professor Ray Majar. Uh, thank you for your uh, informative uh, report, and it was very useful presentation for us, for teachers, and for all students. Uh, dear participants, if you have any questions, you can type on the chat also, and you can uh, ask if you have questions. Okay. Please. Okay. Where's the chat? Let me see the chat. Mm, yeah, chat is here. Come on. And uh, we have uh, our, uh, one of our students, Badalam, speaks uh, Arabic language very well, and she wants to ask. There is an echo, I don't understand. 
I don't understand. There is an echo. One of our students, uh, Badalwa Mavrita, speaks Arabic language very well. She wants uh, to oh, okay. ask a question in Arabic language. Okay. Uh -huh. Mavrita, uh, please. I'll have... Yes. Mm -hmm. Not well, but I can speak in Arabic. And <laughs> okay, go ahead. I can say. Uh, okay, um, I'm sorry. And the Tatekalam and Logati Larabia? No, no, Taba, an Arabia, Taba, an Arabia. And the Indian Arabia? They did that. No. Well, I'm a Tatekalam to have a Loga, but I'm a Jayet. لا مشكلة أفهمك لا مشكلة أفهمك شكرا جزيلا ودرسي درسي جيد جدا